I will use the collision theory to derive the reaction rate for this reaction. Type 1 molecule react with type 2 molecules and form product. The reaction rate is uh, simply K, the reaction rate constant times the concentration of 1 times the concentration of 2 and the reaction rate uh, constant K is equal to, here's the Arrhenius equation, a, the pre-exponential factor times this exponential function, e to the power of negative activation energy over RT. Again, times the concentration of 1 and the concentration of 2. But we're going to look at the collision between just one molecule of type 1 and all other type 2 molecules. First, let's assume this, uh, uh, this orange bar is a type 1 molecule and we assume this uh, sphere is moving straight at a speed v sub 1 and then we know that within time delta t this uh, red, uh, orange sphere can move a distance of v1 times delta t that's the distance this orange sphere travels within a time period delta t again this v sub 1 is the speed of this molecule and then uh, you are looking at eight red spheres. How many of those may collide with the orange sphere? Well, we don't know, but we do know that uh, if the center of a red sphere like this one is inside this uh, cylinder or cylindrical space, and then a collision between this orange and this red spheres may occur. So basically we just need to know how many of those bees have their uh, molecular center inside this cylinder. We have the lens of the cylinder right here and what about this uh, uh, circular area? This shaded area uh, we use sigma. Sigma is the so-called collational sectional area. It's a circular area and uh, the radius is the radius of type 1 plus the radius of type 2. Therefore, sigma is equal to pi times uh, the sum of R1 and R2 squared. And again, this is the volume of the cylinder. And what about the number of B molecules, I'm sorry, type 2 molecules inside the cylinder? We do know the number density of the type 2 molecules, which is just N2 times the Avogadro constant that's the total number of type 2 molecules divided by this uh, uh, V, the uh, really large uppercase V, the volume of the reaction container. So again, I'm going to just use this V here and uh, I'm going to make it a bit more prominent here. Okay, and that tells you the number of the B molecules with their center uh, inside this uh, uh, cylinder and that's equivalent to the number of collisions this orange sphere undergoes within time delta t. So therefore we have this divided by delta t that's the collisional frequency of this uh, orange sphere again type A sphere uh, we don't uh, have uh, just one orange sphere in the box. How many orange spheres we have? We have n1 moles of type 1. So we'll have to multiply this by just uh, n1 and uh, times alpha gatherer constant. That gives you the uh, total number of collisions between all type 1 molecules and all type 2 molecules. Uh, per unit time inside this uh, reaction container. And by convention, we usually look at the uh, uh, reaction rate per unit volume. So we're going to just divide this whole thing by V again so that we're going to get the total collisional frequency between type 1 molecules and type 2 molecules per unit time and per unit volume. So that's here. Not all collisions result in the formation of the product. Only those with 
enough energy and what the right collision angle do. So first, what's the probability of having a collision with enough energy to overcome the energy barrier? Well, it's very simple. We just need to multiply this whole thing by e to the power of negative ea, the activation energy divided by rt. And then also we need to have the uh, right uh, angle of collision. So uh, I'm going to call that uh, uh, orientation factor. Orientation factor. And uh, typically this orientation factor is much less than 100% or much uh, smaller than 1. Uh, this is because uh, the chance is more for the uh, collision between type 2 and type 1 molecule with the right uh, angle of collision and also the right orientations. So again, let's say if you have uh, H2 colliding with CO2, uh, you have to have the collision occur uh, this way to uh, make it possible to form two HCl molecules at the same time. Again, this orientation factor is usually much less than one. But overall, you can see that uh, the uh, uh, entire expression, so this guy gives you the total collisional frequency between all type 1 molecules and all type 2 molecules per unit time, per volume, and, uh, and this gives you the probability of finding the collision with enough energy to overcome the barrier. And right here, that gives you the orientation factor. That's the probability of finding that collision with the right uh, collision angle and orientation. And now we're going to com compare this uh, complicated expression from uh, the collision theory and uh, and this expression, this is just a, a very simple expression uh, for a second order reaction. I'm going to use different color here. So first, uh, you're going to see this uh, exponential function here, and you see this exponential function here. And also, uh, I'm going to look at this N1 divided by V here. That's the concentration of type 1 molecule. So here, and we see N2 over V, that's the concentration of type 2 molecule. And finally, this, uh, pre uh, <coughs> this A, uppercase A here, this is the pre-exponential factor in the Arrhenius equation for the reaction rate constant. So this A is going to be equal to Afgaro constant, right here times V1, we're going to make the correction to V1 a bit later, times sigma, and uh, times uh, this alpha gyro constant again, so right here. Uh, we were assuming uh, this uh, orange sphere is moving at V1 speed, but uh, there are two corrections we need to make. First, we're talking about a very large number of molecules. So it's better to use the average speed rather than individual speed. So we're going to just uh, make some change here. This is the average speed of type 1 molecule. And two, if you just use the speed of type 1 molecule, you're assuming type 2 molecules are not moving at all, but they do move. So we need to have the relative speed between 1 and 2. So basically, we need to change this 1 to 1, 2. That's the relative speed between 1, 2. And also, we're going to have to do this here. And 